into that place going down by the riverside where I see my face in the water Thank you Imagine, if you will, being crammed into a 15-passenger van alongside 18 other people with whom you share no common language, driving through the night in southern Siberia with not a window crack. And from what you can see in the dark, there are no guardrails on the winding hills you climb. And it's unclear whether the driver is bobbing his head to the single cassette that he's been playing for the past 10 hours, or if he's falling asleep at the wheel. How many people here would sign up for that road trip? <laughs> all right, all right. I've been on this drive, and if given the opportunity again, I would say yes. But here's why. Because that van brought me to a place called Tuva. How many of you have heard of Tuva? And how many of you have been to Tuva? Yeah. So clearly this is not a destination for American tourism. And it's certainly the most foreign place that I've ever traveled to by far. I like to travel to new places. And as a musician, I love to learn the music of other cultures. And of course, I'm not the only one. So what does one seek to find by traveling to foreign places? And what do we seek to feel by listening to or learning the music of other cultures? I believe that a big part of why people do this is to experience humanity more fully. To learn what being human means in its broadest sense outside of our own micro perspective of the human experience. Music is a mirror that reflects the unseeable and otherwise intangible elements of the human experience. It shows us our truest intellectual, emotional, and cultural selves. And it provides a looking glass that takes us as close as we could possibly get to deeply knowing and feeling the cultural, intellectual, and emotional experiences of others, no matter how foreign. I've been studying music since I was about seven years old and writing songs since I was 12. I graduated from a reputable college of music and spent the first 10 years of my adulthood touring the US and a bit beyond, performing my songs for audiences ranging in size from three to 3,000 people. It's fair to say that I've spent my entire life thus far exploring myself through music and connecting with others through songs. In 2012, my partner and I took an 11-hour flight from New York City to Moscow. We took the metro into Red Square and did some sightseeing. We took a little snooze outside of the Kremlin in the Alexander Garden. We took uh, another six-hour flight from there to a small city in Siberia called Krasnyarsk. We tooled around there for a few hours, and then we crammed into the aforementioned 15-passenger van with 18 other people and took the 12 hour ride through the night into the center of Asia to the city of Kizil Tuva. We traveled all this way to learn some new music and to share some music of our own. When I refer to Kizil as a city, I use that as a relative term. Tuva is made up of largely rural and agricultural regions and even some remaining semi-nomadic communities. But Kazil has a museum and a large performance hall, historic landmarks, and the cultural center that's home to the Tuva National Orchestra and its various branch ensembles, and that's who we were invited to come and collaborate with. Tuva is known for its ancient tradition of throat singing, also known in Tuva as Herme. Herme is a technique of singing that produces a simultaneous low drone sound with anywhere from one to four high melodic and harmonic overtones. It's 
it is, to, it is done by women, but it's more typically done by men. And I'll play you a sample of what it sounds like. Keep in mind that this is one man singing, and so all you're hearing here is a single human voice at one time. And this is the late Kangaral Andar. <laughs> There are various styles and approaches to throat singing. And in uh, traditional Tuvan music, there are songs or portions of songs that include conventional singing as well. There are also a series of traditional bowed and strum string instruments and percussion instruments that have existed in this culture for many hundreds, if not thousands, of years and are still handmade by just a handful of people in Tuva. Here's a picture of Tuva's Alash ensemble with some traditional Tuvan instruments. The traditional songs of Tuva and the techniques of the singing and instrument playing are a reflection of a deep emotional and spiritual connection to the natural world. And when you hear the sounds that Tuvan musicians create, you get this concurrent sense of groundedness and otherworldliness. The music of Tuva is the sound of a deep and ancient tradition that's kept alive and celebrated by its people. All of that being said, even with an appreciation for world music, Tuva was not on my radar as a place that I expected to travel to in my lifetime. So when my partner and I received an invitation from our friends in the Alash Ensemble to participate in a cultural exchange in Kazil, we were thrilled by the prospect of it, but we were cautious in our optimism that it would all come together. We knew it would be a difficult place to get to. Nevertheless, our process of getting the thumbs up involved sending off our documents, followed by a long and quiet waiting period, followed by, we'll see you in a few days, and we booked our flights, and in less than a week, we were there. For two weeks, we stayed in and around Kazil, collaborating with members of the Tuvan National Orchestra and some of their smaller ensembles. And I spent most of my time there with a group of five exceptional women who make up the ensemble Ugulza. And these ladies are among the most humble, focused, and talented musicians that I have ever met. And they taught me a wordy, traditional Tuvan song, which I was to memorize with decent articulation. And I taught them the song that you heard me start out with today, In the Water, which I wrote a few years prior to this trip, never imagining where it would end up. We didn't share a common language. Every now and then, there would be someone around to translate, but for all intents and purposes, we communicated simply with our music. We effectively taught each other and learned songs that were otherwise very foreign in all respects with no language other than the music itself. And at the end of our time there, we performed these songs on the national stage for a large and enthusiastic audience of Tuvan people, musicians, and, and dignitaries. And after the performance, a goat was slaughtered in our honor, and we were presented with the gift of a celebratory plate of innards, ligaments, and tendons, alongside a large carafe of fermented horse milk, which was actually pretty good. So, uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> I spent two weeks straight with the women of Agulza, and I felt a sisterhood with them, unlike some friendships I've had for many years. I knew very little about them, and they knew just as much about me. And with nothing to clutter our perceptions of one another as people, all I saw in them was a fierce love and passion for music and for the traditions that they belonged to, as well as the curiosity and excitement that they felt for my music and my traditions. And in me, I believe they, felt, they saw that same curiosity and that same passion. Music is a mirror that reflects the unseeable and otherwise intangible elements of the human experience, showing us our truest selves. And it provides a looking glass that takes us as close as we could possibly get to deeply knowing and feeling the experiences of others, no matter how foreign. And moreover, through hearing and learning the traditional music of another culture, we can know ourselves more deeply for how different we are not and for how human we are. You don't have to be a musician to participate in this kind of cultural exchange, and you don't have to travel all the way to Siberia to experience something eye-opening. Our country's most celebrated cities are what they are because of their international communities and immigrant populations. Engage with, work with, share a meal with, go out dancing with people who have a different first language than you, who practice a different religion than you, who belong to traditions that you're unfamiliar with, and you will deeply enrich your one precious experience on this earth as a human being. I'll close with a verse from the song that the Tuvan Women's Ensemble, Ugulza, taught me. And the meaning of this song translates to, together we are stronger. Bejelen bi so dalan bi so ye, bejen geji shin chilik bi so ye, Bejen giji o da kancharo ye, bishle biske kain shedero ye, bishle biske kain shedero ye, adalam bishchede lembis.